everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Thank you for tuning in. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Luna Mar Reader. And today, folks, we are doing a pick a card reading that is focused on prosperity. So I want to focus on prosperity in a general way as opposed to looking at money specifically or your job or your business or your work because prosperity covers many possible things depending on how you attract it into your life. I think the key here is to be open to abundance and to get a sense of what's ahead for us in this general way, what it is we are attracting. And so the cards might come up and say, well, it's about work or it's about this or that. So we're going to focus on the different aspects of the cards and see how they support um, the prosperity idea uh, through the different readings. And the way I want to do this reading today is uh, a four by nine. So I want to use one deck and divide it into four nine card portraits. And I've got my charms out today. So I've got the key, I've got the lock and the feather, as well as the scissors. So go ahead and pause the video if you need to, to zoom in uh, to any of these charms for your reading and you are going to find the timestamps in the description box. So I'm going to go ahead and deal out uh, the four piles of nine cards. My deck is uh, shuffled. I'm just going to um, shuffle a little bit more here and then divide out the cards by dealing them. So here we go. Okay, here are our four piles of nine cards. So we're going to do four nine card portraits, one for each of the charms. And again, the charm timestamps are in the description box. So go right ahead and click on the one that you resonate with and I will see you in your reading. All right, here we are with the key group reading and I've got your nine cards that I dealt out earlier. What I'm going to do is keep them in the order that I dealt them out in and I'm just going to turn over the cards and deal out your nine card portrait. So here we go with your cards. Okay, key group, here are your nine cards. Remember, we are looking at a prosperity reading and I'm seeing a few challenging cards in your portrait and I'm also seeing uh, the man and the woman coming up here. So just from like an overview of the nine card portrait, the idea of relationships comes through. There is also the bird and the garden that support the idea of communication and relationships. But I think the main indications are gonna come through the challenging cards. That's because the whip and the fox are in the first diagonal and the fox in particular is in the center of your nine card portrait. What's interesting is the stork at the top here. So this tells me that you need to take some initiative, make some changes in yourself, in your immediate environment in order to shake out limitations and to bring in this prosperity. I have to note that the star is one of the luckiest cards of the deck. It's all about wish fulfillment and healing. So we do see that within the coming phase for you in terms of prosperity, you can begin to turn things around for the better. So let's go ahead into the details of the cards now and build your portrait from the ground up. The first thing I want to focus on is the fox in the middle of all of this. So the fox is a bit of a tricky card, but the first thing that comes to mind to me in the context of prosperity is stinginess. So I want to suggest and put it out there that if you're feeling a bit stingy about money or about your prosperity in general, maybe about things, maybe with time and your resources, it might be a good time to loosen up a little bit and, um, you know, to be a bit more open to the flow of give and take in your life. Now, of course, I'm not saying that this means that you spend in unreasonable ways or that, you know, you go around just dumping uh, your time and dumping your resources all over the place. It's not what it means at all. And I think when it comes to prosperity work, often people will make the mistake of thinking that that's what it means you do, that being open to prosperity means being unreasonable with money. It is not that at all. It actually means being reasonable with your money, your time and resources, but it does mean loosening up the grip. So there is possibly a fine line. I don't think it's a fine line. I think it's pretty obvious, but when we're first starting out on the work, it might not be so clear. And so it seems to be a fine line. So if that's the case for you, we will call it a fine line and suggest that you want to make a distinction between uh, being open to receive, giving and taking and being unreasonable with your time and resources. 
So this line here with the stork, fox, and whip suggests that you want to shake out a little bit from any possible stinginess that you might have, and that could be suggested by the fox. I also think the idea of being open to trust, uh, being less doubtful about people uh, and things in general can be helpful. I also think that it's possible that you need to release certain people, certain places, uh, you know, that are not supportive and that might have that sense of negativity or stinginess. So it doesn't have to be you, though it's most probably uh, you as well, because we tend to attract patterns in our life because we have them on some level. Uh, but it can also mean letting go of unhealthy environments, uh, stale environments, um, people who are, you know, doubt, doubtful and doubt filled, uh, you know, and they don't have that openness. So that could be a step that you take. Let's look at the bird, fox and man. So here the relationship element comes through and the bird and fox are a little bit tricky. So it does seem to be a person in your life that could be limiting your sense of prosperity in some way. I think that um, they could be someone who does mirror that sense of stinginess, you know, they're not transparent, they're not trusting. And with the bird here, they could cause you a bit of anxiety. So it can be a certain person with a certain kind of influence on your life who could be limiting your potential or your sense of prosperity. And it can come through or he can come through in your life in any number of ways. But I have to say that it's also possible that in both diagonals, the fox refers to the job. So the fox is the card of employment. It has to do with nine to five type of work. And so this could be the issue in your life that is limiting your prosperity. It's either that you are without a job or that you are in a job that is limiting or one that is unhappy. And so there can be a certain number of changes that you can take or undertake in order to improve your whole job situation. And this in turn will enhance your prosperity, not just from an income and money perspective, but I would say from a broader perspective, we're going to see in the different lines that your sense of community and the people around you matter. And when it comes to the bird, fox, and man, well, this can be a colleague or someone on the job or maybe even a customer, someone who's related to your work uh, with whom a conversation or perhaps more transparency can help. So I think some things need to be shaken up a little bit here because of the stork mainly and also because of the other indications that we're seeing um, through the lines so far in order to move past a limiting mentality, maybe over caution, restriction, doubt, you know, lack of transparency, you know, these sorts of limiting beliefs and limiting attitudes. Let's move on to the rose. We've got the stork, garden, and man. So the garden is a card of community. It has to do with events and gatherings. And when we see it with a person card, it can point to a meeting with this person. And the stork here suggests that you might want to take initiative to make this meeting happen. Now let's T cross this line with the central column. We've got the garden fox and woman. So clearly this has to do uh, with a relationship. You could be either the man or the woman in this context. And uh, the fox here points to a colleague, just like it did uh, with the man. And with the garden here, it can point to the workplace. So again, this can be about your work, your community at work, and possibly networking for the job. I think that any way you combine these cards, it is pointing to the same essence, the idea that you need to sit down and talk with someone and uh, see if your, um, either your, your straight up, your income can be improved or other factors can be improved so that you can have a, a overall better feeling about your job and your work situation in general. So definitely with the garden at the uh, node here between the two lines, it's important to make time for either one or more people so that you can figure out some details around your job. And we see that this aligns well with what we saw in the second diagonal. The coffin, fox, and star. This is an interesting combination. It can mean the end of a job. Um, it can also mean a new job in light of the closure here and the beautiful star that brings healing. 
And so we do see that despite the challenges, if you're willing to shake things up and take initiative to find answers, to clarify matters, then you can start to turn things around thanks to the star. And if this is about a job, as in straight up a job because of the fox, then the fox and star can mean that you do land on the opportunity that you're really after. It's just that with the coffin, it can be a bit of time before you do this. So again, patience is key. And um, you know the idea of letting go and allowing your flow to come through is highlighted by the cards. The coffin and fox on a more spiritual level because of the star, which inspires that sense of spirituality, it's possible that you need to let go of certain limiting attitude, just like we said at the outset. So I think this is important. The bird, woman, and whip. Again, here is another uh, combination of a conversation. And this time there's a bit of a conflict that comes into play because of the whip. Um, sometimes the bird and whip can point to gossip, but I feel that it's more of a conversation. This is like the third line, one, two, yeah, probably the third line, well, the fourth with the diagonal, that is inviting you to have conversation. So I'm getting a sense that maybe you'd been bottling up certain feelings or certain ideas or thoughts. Um, you've been keeping them to yourself. And because of your historic and all of the other conversation and meeting and people cards, it's important that you vocalize a little bit, that you reach out, that you communicate with others, because without that, you're not going to have the answers that you need in order to improve your overall um, prosperity, your, you know, the elements that affect uh, your prosperity in your life. So I really encourage you to step out of your, um, you know, this sense of closure um, and reach out to people, have some conversations. It's okay if there are some disagreements, you know, ideas need to be shared and conflicts need to be resolved. And with this, then you have a basis for improving your overall situation. So a bit of a challenging line here, but again, confirming the need to communicate with people. Let's move on to the columns. We have the stork, coffin, and bird. I think this line confirms exactly what we were talking about. Um, the stork and coffin means that something that had been on hold now comes through. And with the bird here, which is a vocal card, we see that you're able to step out of your silence and uh, reach out to ask questions and express yourself. So don't keep it to yourself, you know, externalize it, vocalize it, reach out to people, share with them what you have in mind, see if they can help out with your prosperity. And maybe it's about, you know, sharing and caring that is going to enhance this flow of prosperity in your life in general. We've talked about the garden, fox, and woman. Briefly, we touched on the man, uh, star, and whip. Uh, the star and whip is a lovely combination that suggests healing and improvements um, along the down the line, I would say, because it's on the right-hand side of your portrait. And with the man here, it can mean that things improve with this person. We saw in the second diagonal that there's a bit of a tricky situation here. We see there's another tricky situation here with the woman, but in this side of the portrait, we have the star, which tells us that you now have a basis to improve matters and it is an opportunity to enhance uh, the situation. I think it is about your prosperity situation as a whole, but it seems that these people here or this community in which uh, there are these people is an important um part of your whole prosperity picture. Maybe this is a job thing. Maybe this is a support network thing, or it has to do with giving and taking with people in a broader, deeper way as like a, a stream or like a pattern in your life that needs to be looked at a bit more closely. So I would say this is quite an interesting portrait in terms of how it affects your prosperity uh, for you key group. And it's very clear to me that you need to step out of your sense of closure and silence to interact more with people. Um, you know, don't hide, you know, be there, reach out, uh, make space for giving and taking with people, even if it means locking horns sometimes or disagreeing on certain things. It's important to vocalize, externalize, and reach out so that you can start turning the situation around. And I do think that you successfully begin to do this because of the lovely star in your line. 
So let me know how you like these ideas. Leave me your thoughts and comments. I'm really looking forward to them. And until we meet again, thank you so much for watching and take very good care of yourself. Here we are with the lock group and I've got your nine cards that I dealt out at the outset. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna keep them in this order and just deal out your portrait right away. So here we go with your cards. All right, here is a really interesting set of cards in relation to your prosperity and your sense of well-being in this sense. The thing that I'm picking up right away is the mountain at the top of your spread. And the mountain is usually associated with obstacles and blockages. There is also the mouse that can bring out this element a little bit, but really the rest of the spread is really supportive with regards to your well-being and your prosperity. And it's really the house in the middle of it all that suggests that this has to do with your sense of foundations, what you're building for yourself, and of course, the idea of where you live and your lifestyle at home in general. There is also the dog that comes through. So this can point to uh, close friends or family uh, that can impact your sense of prosperity. And we have the lily, which can be about work and career. Um, but I think that it's a bit of a more a broader kind of card in this context, suggesting your lifestyle and uh, your life in general, you know, how you live kind of thing. There is an interesting pair here, the letter and the book that points to news. And with the mouse, this can be a little bit challenging. So this can be about paperwork or some information, some kind of communication that needs to come through. So let's go ahead and weave these cards in the context of your prosperity and see what kind of picture we put together. The mountain house and book is a really interesting pair because it means that you could be contemplating a life in a different place. It can be a life abroad, in a different country, in a different city. And the thing about the book is that this is still not yet known. This is still an idea that you could be contemplating. Maybe you didn't even start to contemplate it, but it can mean that you make changes in your home base, you know, your uh, foundations in general, and that being open to a different place can help out with your prosperity or can open up doors in your life. Another way to interpret this line is that it can have to do with family, um, possibly also because of the dog. And uh, with the book here, there can be some um, things that are not yet revealed that can affect your prosperity. Maybe things are going on back home and um, these come into the picture to affect your prosperity in one way or another. This line is generally neutral. It's neither positive nor negative. It is highlighting the idea of your foundations and where you might consider living in the near term, but also, and I think mostly in the long term. The child, house, and mouse, this is interesting as well because the child and house suggests a new home. And so this can be, again, another indication where you could be contemplating where you live, um, you know, where you establish your foundations for the longer term. And uh, this is what would be the main thing that affects your prosperity in the coming phase. The thing about the mouse is that it's a bit tricky. It's not a very bright card. Uh, with the house, it can mean that things break down and, you know, there's plenty of repairs. You know, the first thing that comes to mind to me is the idea of feng shui and the idea that you might want to straighten up your space and refresh the energies in your space so that you can attract more prosperity. That is possible, but it can also mean that, you know, there's just things that you need to do around the house or take care of some details around your home. And this will help out with your prosperity in terms of um, just feeling better with your life and your lifestyle in this space. And of course, the idea of considering a new home comes into play, except the mouse can throw a bit of doubt on this. Uh, it would then encourage you to consider this carefully and to look at the details of your life, your lifestyle, the home you would live in, and everything that surrounds the idea of a move. Let's move on to the rose. I want to look at this line here because it has a couple of challenging cards. So the, the mountain is potentially challenging. We've got the mountain, moon, and mouse. So the moon is generally a gentle card. It is positive and supportive. 
Uh, it has to do with uh, beauty and attraction, you know, feminine aspects and um, the sense of attraction that is associated with the archetypal feminine. With the mouse, there can be some issues here. There can be a bit of cloudedness, a bit of doubt, maybe some anxiety. And with the mountain, I feel that there is this blockage element that's coming through. And so I feel that there could be some inner patterns or some, uh, you know, some something deeper that is affecting your sense of prosperity. And I do feel because of the mouse, you might not feel as deserving as you should feel deserving. Sometimes the mouse is limiting. It has to do with loss and drain, and it has to do with things being taken away, eating away. And so I feel that you might feel that life takes away from you. And this is actually a pretty toxic feeling to have. And I wish for you to release that pattern, you know, and affirm your abundance, affirm that life is here to support you and let go of any sense of loss and drain. And, you know, the idea that life takes away from you, it, it's really, um, it's really not a supportive belief. I think with the moon, you can turn this around. You can sort of uh, release uh, the, the blockage that is, represented by the mountain and in time you can sort of feel better about yourself and you know your prosperity and that sense of deserving so i think this is quite a helpful line in terms of deeper insights and the spiritual aspects of prosperity let's move on to the dog house and letter so the dog and house usually points to people in your inner circle it can suggest family members family friends on the job, it can point to colleagues. And with the letter here, there is some news that comes through. Now, as it stands, this is a pretty neutral line and it's not particularly telling. So we can uh, get more insights by T-crossing it with the, um, the column here. And the mouse letter and book does bring a challenging piece of news. And this can affect your prosperity in the sense that you might need to make a decision. When I tie this line into this diagonal, I think it can be the reason why you might consider a different place, moving, or making some kind of deep change in your home, your lifestyle, and your foundations. So it seems that family or closer friends, they sort of impact your space, they impact your sense of prosperity, and uh, I think you might want to make some adjustments so that you can you know, you can align with your goals and with what you are building and with your priorities. So don't hesitate to have a look at what's going on around you in your closer circle. Also keep in mind that piece of wisdom that everyone tends to agree on. And that's the idea that you are your the combination of your five closest friends or something like that. And so you might want to take a look at who is your inner circle, what they mean to you in terms of prosperity, what kind of uh, beliefs and energies they tend to attract, and examine that and see if it affects your uh, point of attraction, if it affects your sense of prosperity. It's important. In a more day-to-day, -day mundane way, um, the letter and book, along with the mouse, can point to paperwork that you need to straighten out. This can mean bills to pay, catching up on some administration, and it seems that it affects uh, where you live. Maybe it affects your rent or your mortgage or you know anything that has to do with your home or other aspects possibly in relation to people so see if you can straighten up communications you know close the gaps close what you owe if you can and turn the page on that so that you can reset your uh, sense of prosperity the bottom line is really interesting because it has to do with your life in a bigger way the child and lily suggests a new phase in your life and with the book here it can mean that you don't yet have a lot of insight or foresight into what this new phase is about but it seems that you might want to turn the page on a certain phase in your life and move on or make some changes with regards to your foundations and what you're building for the long term because this can affect your prosperity in other words i would say that it's a good time to revise what you're actually building for yourself you know, with the house in the middle here and the lily, as we're going to see in the central column, 
it has to do with your life and your lifestyle and really having a look at what you're building for yourself. It's not just with regards to where you live, how you live, but it also has to do with what you're building in a metaphorical sense, like what kind of life you are creating uh, for yourself. Make sure prosperity is part of the plan and if you need to release some negativity or you know some kind of patterns that eat away at your prosperity, then definitely it's the right time to look at these things. Let's move on to the columns. We have the mountain dog and child. Again, the idea of the mountain and dog here can bring up the possibility of being abroad. Maybe you have a friend abroad. With the child here, you could be looking at moving abroad or connecting with them somehow. Possibly this has to do with the renewal of the relationship. Maybe that's what's at hand after some of these issues here. But the dog can also mean that you get a job abroad, for example. Uh, the dog can represent an employee. It's associated with the junior. And so maybe you're starting out on a new phase, on a new venture. And uh, it can involve a place abroad. Now, if it doesn't, then it might be about um, loosening up a little bit the blockage of the mountain and being more open to uh, certain relationships here. And we see that a T crosses the central row. So again, it can mean that you make new friends, you revise certain friendships or that you renew a certain relationship. So all of these affect your lifestyle, your sense of well-being. And I would also add that because of the house in the middle and the mountain at the top, the idea of boundaries comes through. And I think with the mouse, this is a really helpful concept because you want to stop any sort of bleeding in your life. So again, this idea of loss, feeling that life drains at you, feeling that life takes away from you. You know, you want to rectify such limiting beliefs, but also put up some healthy boundaries um, between you and negative or unhelpful environments, people or situations in general. So I think the idea of healthy boundaries comes through here and this can really support you with your prosperity. I think this is a really helpful thought. The moon, house, and lily is a beautiful set of cards for a healthy lifestyle. So with the lily here, the idea of health and well-being can come through. And I feel with the house and moon, it really has to do with how you live, your routine, um, you know, your sense of well-being, what you do to keep yourself healthy and organized, and you know, having this some kind of orderly lifestyle. Uh, lining things up in the proper way, tidying, decluttering, you know, really creating some positive energy in your surrounding um, can help you attract better prosperity. So think about that and think about what you can do to enhance your lifestyle. And as we said, the mouse letter and book um, is a bit of a challenging combination here. We suggested it has to do with some news. I feel that it could have to do with paperwork. If you have like piles of papers that need to be cleared up, uh, communications that you need to follow up on, see if you can clear all of that so that you can bring this to a head and um, you know continue with that prosperity. These little issues here and there, they tend to get in the way of our prosperity. Um, they delay matters, they drain at us. Uh, they tend to be a drag, and the more we postpone them, the more they're a drag. So I would say, you know, just draw the line with all of this administration, paperwork, documents, emails, all of that. See if you can finish all of that and feel free from it all. So you can touch base with yourself and, you know, create more space and new space in your environment. So overall, I feel this is a whole lot of helpful tips that can really help you enhance your sense of well-being uh, so that you can attract more prosperity in your life. There is the sense of relationships that comes through a little bit, but I think the key is really focused around your lifestyle, your sense of well-being, you know, where you live, how you live, you know, what is home for you and what you're building for yourself over the long term. So see if you can 
put all of these ideas together in your specific context and see what changes you can begin to make today so that you can attract more prosperity for yourself. I think it's a peaceful spread overall, and I really think that if you take advantage of the insights, you can create a space of well-being for yourself that will be a much better point of attraction for your prosperity. So let me know how you like these ideas. I'm really looking forward to your thoughts and your comments. And until we meet again, thank you so much for watching and take very good care of yourself. All right, Feather Group, here we are with your reading and I've got your nine cards, the same ones that I've dealt from the outset. And I'm gonna keep them in this order and just deal out your portrait. All right, here are some lovely cards to see, especially in the context of prosperity. With the bear in the middle of it all, the first thing that comes to mind for me is the idea of thinking big. And look, we've got the clouds right at the outset of your portrait. And the clouds have to do with your thoughts, what you're thinking, and possibly some thinking patterns. So with the bear here, it very clearly has to do with thinking big and being ambitious. And on top of that, we have the key on the other side of the bear, which is really good for that sense of growth and the willingness to step up to something bigger. So I feel that the key message coming through your first diagonal with regards to your prosperity has to do with thinking bigger. And I would say daring to think bigger, going after your ambitions and really believing in your ability to achieve these ambitions. So before we get into the other lines, overall, this is a lovely spread. We have the tower, cross, and key. This is a really curious line for me because each of these cards is one of the mystery cards or the spiritual cards in the Lenormand deck. And then we see them showing up right next to each other in the bottom line. Otherwise, we've got the flowers that is beautiful, the anchor that is supportive, and the ring, which can point to a relationship, but I don't think it does. I think it's going to refer to your commitments and the idea of really completing what you start and sticking with what you're doing until you see results. So let's go ahead and weave the rest of the lines. We've got the tower, bear, and anchor. Again, I am seeing the sense of strength, the idea of uh, really thinking bigger and growing. The tower is a card of growth and it has to do with the sense of expertise and authority. You know, some people, someone who's at that level basically. And so the idea of ambition and growth is also highlighted through the tower. The anchor is also a really strong card. It's a bit like the bear, very heavy, uh, you know, really stands in its ground and its place. And with the tower, there is that similar energy, the idea of really having confidence in yourself, establishing strong foundations, and sticking with things until you see them through. So I think there is the idea of effort, uh, the idea of commitment, and uh, you know, doing the work in order to achieve the goals that you want to see for yourself. Let's move on to the rose. We have the clouds, flowers, and anchor. The flowers with the clouds has to do with the idea of being more positive and optimistic, and the anchor in flowers has to do again with that sense of confidence. So I really think you've got to give yourself more credit for your capabilities, and you want to think more positively about yourself and your potential. I also think with the flowers, it has to do with creativity and the idea of bringing out what you have inside of you. And, you know, with the other cards and the bear in the middle, I think it is really supportive. It is supporting the idea that you need to, you know, come out. You need to step out into your sense of power, your sense of strength. And all of this is really positive and really supportive of prosperity. Now, the rider, bear, and ring, this can point to an important relationship because of the bear and ring. It might also refer to parents. The bear is sometimes the mother or the parents more generally. And so with the ring, which is a card about close relationships, the idea of parents can come through. So it's going to depend on your specifics, how your parents play a part in your prosperity. But the rider in general is supportive and it has to do with momentum and communication. And so there may be some steps that you can take with your parents that can support your prosperity. Maybe this has to do with your responsibility, uh, their responsibility, some kind of collaboration uh, to achieve certain goals that is going to affect uh, your overall prosperity. But I think that in alignment with the rest of the spread and the 
ge general energy of, that's coming through the portrait, I feel that the central line has to do more with your sense of growth and power again, and the writer here really uh, stepping up to what you're capable of and really um, taking initiative and moving forward in these goals. And the ring is about your sense of commitment. So I'm seeing again that, like we saw in the second diagonal, there is that sense that you need to stick with things a while longer in order to see the results. It can also be an encouragement that you're actually on the right track. So it can mean that you are on the right track, you are doing the right things in order, in order to achieve your prosperity. And so the idea of the anchor, the idea of the ring is stick with what you're doing, it is working, you are on the right track. Now the bottom line is a really interesting set of cards because each of these cards is one of the mystery cards of the Lenormand deck. So they have to do with that sense of guidance, um, that sense of hidden power in your life. Uh, it can refer to the divine and uh, that source of that sort of inspiration and these sources, you know, source at work in life. And so when we see all three cards together, there is a really strong sense that your life is guided and that, you know, something powerful is at play in your life. It's very important to have faith in yourself, to trust your abilities and to trust life and to appreciate that you do have a lot of gifts that you need to bring out into the open and that can really support your prosperity. Uh, in a more day-to-day -day way, reading these cards, this can be about some choices that you need to make, keeping the long-term in mind, and really being resourceful. So that sense of self-reliance is again coming through, just like with the bear in the center of everything and in the different combinations that we saw. So have faith in yourself, trust life, and pull out these miracles out of you into the world. You know, live up to your best self, your highest possible potential. Let's move on to the columns. We have the clouds, rider, and tower. I feel in this case, there could be a past issue that could still be at play in your life. And I think this is something that you might wanna let go of. I think because of the flowers, the idea of forgiveness can come through. Um, but I think the line can also suggest that you've been thinking a lot about your direction and your long-term goals and what it is you really want. And I think now it's time to act. With the rider in the middle here and the bear in the center of it all, it might be time to you know, move past the thinking into the doing. The rider and tower also reminds you to think for the long term, um, to make sure that whatever you're doing now has a positive impact on the long term as well. Now the flowers bear and cross is lovely. This can be about a big decision, but I think it also has to do with your sense of creativity and expression. Um, you need to take these steps now. You need to share what you have, step out into the world. And even if it's a bit challenging at first, I think it's important. And I think it's a matter of destiny that you do this. You know, this is a, a column that T crosses a very interesting bottom line. So again, this idea of having faith in yourself, being optimistic about your capabilities is very much highlighted. And finally, the anchor ring and key, again, suggests this idea of sticking with what you're doing until you see the results. Of course, keep tweaking as you go. You can't expect to have different results if you're doing the same thing. So keep learning, keep on keeping on, and uh, keep on committing to your goals because it seems that you are on the right track and that you will achieve your goals and come through very successfully. The key is a beautiful card, and I think this whole portrait is really powerful and beautiful with lots of cards that really ask you to bring up that sense of growth and the idea of being bigger than what you've given yourself permission to be. So let me know how you like these ideas. Leave me your thoughts and comments and very best of luck with this beautiful phase of prosperity. Until we meet again, thank you so much for watching and take very good care of yourself. Hello Scissors Group and welcome to your reading. I've got your nine cards, the ones that we dealt out at the beginning, and I'm gonna keep them in this order, and I'm gonna deal out your portrait right away so we can look at what lies ahead with you for prosperity and what you can do to attract more of it in your life. All right, Scissors Group, look at this very interesting set of cards. 
we have some really lucky cards in here. We have the sun and the clover, and we also have the fish card, which is the card of money and prosperity. And of course, it's not just money what we're looking at. We're looking at prosperity in a broader sense. We have the heart at the top of your spread. We have the beautiful tree, and we have the scythe right in the middle of your portrait. And with the snake and road, I think this has to do with a deep change that is very possible for you. We also have these two cards which have to do with travel and changes. So I really think this is very supportive of prosperity because of the positive cards, but it seems that the key has to do with a deep change and a willingness to let go. Now, one thing that comes through the first diagonal here is the heart and scythe. The heart and scythe clearly indicates a heartbreak and the scythe and tree has to do with being uprooted. So I feel that there needs to be some kind of release from a heartbreak or possibly a hope that you've had for yourself, for your life, that you need to completely let go of. And it is this complete willingness to let go that I think will enable you to release yourself into a new phase of prosperity. The snake, scythe, and ship is similar. The snake and scythe has to do with, well, I read it as a snake bite. And so with the scythe and heart, I think it has to do with a hurtful episode that you might have experienced. And with the ship here, it's a bit like the scythe and tree. It's about breaking out and away from this episode. So this has to do with the willingness to let go and in a deeper sense or in a more um, heart-centered sense, it has to do with the willingness to forgive. And forgiveness is a tricky concept. It doesn't have to do with um, being okay with what the other person did, but it has to do with releasing yourself from the negative energy. That's what forgiveness is. It's an inside job. It doesn't have to do with uh, much with the other person at all. And so from these first two diagonals, it's, they have a similar structure, you know, there is this idea of a painful episode and the idea of, you know, removing yourself from it, releasing yourself from it. So these um, energies, this letting go seems to be a prerequisite for the kind of prosperity that you can attract moving forward. And I would say the level of prosperity that you can attract moving forward. So very important to let go, to release yourself from this hurtful episode, whatever it may have been in your context, and really being willing to change in ways that you might not have anticipated before. The heart, road, and ship is all about pursuing what makes you happy. The heart and road has to do with pursuing uh, the things that open up your heart, um, you know, that make you feel engaged and connected with what matters to you. And the ship is like the road. It's about sailing away in this path of happiness uh, because you are pursuing the things that make you happy. So it's not always possible to do everything that makes us happy or only the things that make us happy, but at least take steps to make time for the things that engage you, that connect you, you know, that you have um, passion for, that you're passionate about, you know, indulge yourself a little bit in these ways. The sun, scythe, and clover is actually a really positive combination, even though we have the scythe in there. The sun on the one hand, the clover on the other hand, it has to do with a lucky break, a sudden phase of prosperity, a sudden phase of luck that comes through. I really feel you can break through and into a better uh, level of prosperity, um, a better space that attracts prosperity. I also think it's important to trust a little bit in now uh, you're good. Uh, you know, you can't plan for everything. You can't uh, make everything happen yourself. It is a collaboration with your co-creator. And so I feel that you want to, um, you know, give it to God a little bit, to some extent, if you know what I mean, you know, the so to speak, the idea of trusting a little bit in life. And of course, the sun and clover are still really positive. So there's, there's plenty of potential for you uh, to attract lots of prosperity. The snake, fish, and tree. Now, this is a curious combination. It's uh, quite in contrast with the aggression, or should I say the sharpness of the scythe. Uh, the snake is 
much calmer, it is slower, it is a roundabout card. It's unlike the scythe, which is really sharp and direct and, you know, very um, a straightforward and in-your-face type of energy. The snake is much more discreet. I like to see the snake and fish, though, because it tells me that you're clever with money, um, that you have a really good uh, financial acumen, and so you really want to tap into this to make your money grow, your sense of prosperity grow, and with the tree, in all cases, it is really nice to see next to the fish because it tells us that you are on your way to making more income, attracting more prosperity, just feeling better uh, overall, and experiencing more well-being in your life. I would just say that the snake can be a bit challenging and so you want to make sure that you're not wasting, um, that your budget is under control, you know that you're doing all the right things with your money so that it can actually grow in a healthy and a sound way. Let's move on to the columns. We have the heart, sun and snake. Now this is a curious combination because uh, the snake is usually challenging, but with the sun, I feel it is easily overcome. Um, I think here, because of the snake tying into the other lines, I think you are okay with letting go of the past. I think you're ready to heal and to move on, and you need to do just that, like we saw in your diagonals. I also think the snake and sun can mean that uh, you know you're on the right track, you are pursuing the right track and it also suggests that you turn away into your own priorities you know so a bit of selfishness might help out here it's not just about everything you give and do to other people prioritize your own goals as well and i think this ties in nicely with the top row where we said that you want to pursue what makes you happy Pursue what makes you happy. Not If you can't do this 100% of the time, at least do it some of the time. The road, scythe, and fish can mean a complete change of direction. I have to put it out there for you folks. It is in the cards. It is so clear. The road might mean that you're pursuing a certain path, and then the scythe comes and it, you know, it sort of completely changes that. Um, you have to change directions, and I think that's what's going to contribute mostly to attracting uh, a much better level of prosperity into your life. With the fish here, it does really align with that well. It points to the idea of making changes with your, uh, with your money, your finances, um, and it T-crosses the bottom row, which has to do with these adjustments and these careful things that you're doing about your money. So I think there needs to be a deep change in how you're doing things. You're doing a lot of right things. You have a lot of uh, potential and a lot of positive energy that surrounds you. But there also needs to be a radical change in your life so that you can attract the degree of prosperity that you aspire to. And what's really nice is that the right-hand side column here, the ship, clover, and tree, is very, very supportive of uh, some newfound sense of prosperity, like uh, a new phase of prosperity, a new phase of growth uh, in your prosperity. I think you are uh, on the right track. You are right to think uh, about the things that you love, about the changes that you need to make, and I think you will achieve your prosperity goals. The tree is about growth and the ship is about going beyond uh, your comfort zone in a general way. And with the clover, there's all around luck. So I feel these are really, really supportive of better income, more prosperity, better overall well-being. They are really um, good feeling cards. So overall scissors group, there's a lot of potential for you to make a whole new level of prosperity happen for you. You can do this. You can attract this in your life. The thing is that it's going to demand a radical change. This change has to do with how you manage your money. Yes, you know, the things you do on a day-to-day -day basis in a practical way. But it also has to do with pursuing the things you love and, very importantly, Letting go of a hurtful episode, whether that was something hurtful in a deeply personal way that has sort of paralyzed your life in, a, in some way or other, or if it has to do with some limiting beliefs, uh, some toxic beliefs, it's possible because of the snake. 
you need to let all of that go and trust life in bigger ways in order to attract this level of prosperity that you're after. And I feel you can make this happen. You can. Just be willing to change. Be open to the new, to um, that sense of adventure that awaits you. And I'm pretty sure you're going to attract this wonderful new level of prosperity. So let me know how you like these ideas. Leave me your thoughts and comments. I'm really looking forward to them. And until we meet again, thank you so much for watching and take very good care of yourself. Mm -hmm.